If you want to get going in mixed media and collage, it can be a bit overwhelming. You know, where do you start? And you see all these artists who have beautiful stashes of different papers and materials, and you haven't got all those things. So you kind of give up and, and don't get going. So I've devised a really simple exercise that I think will give you the confidence to get going. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and I share tips and tricks every week. I also work in mixed media incorporating watercolour. So we want to share a really simple way of, of starting mixed media work and collage and layering and all sorts. I'm working in my art journal and this is the sort of thing I do in in that journal and there's collage and there's stenciling and there's texture and I put samples in and and things like that. It's a homemade journal and this is watercolour paper. You need something pretty substantial, at least £140, 300 GSM, just so that it won't fall to pieces. And I've marked off four squares with masking tape. We're going to do four all based around the same papers and techniques and see how they all turn out a bit differently and the great thing of doing a little series is if something goes wrong with number one you can put it right on number two something is really nice on number two you can do more on number three and while number three is drying you can carry on with number four so just a little series is great masking tape tip is take off some of the stickiness on your clothing just so it doesn't rip your paper. This paper is super soft and always rips. So mine is gonna rip, hopefully yours won't. Now we need to collect some papers. I watch people on YouTube and they have the most beautiful pre-printed papers and I think, oh, I haven't got any of those. And you might be thinking the same thing. I've got some packing paper. That came in probably an Amazon delivery. I have got some old music paper, which I got from a charity shop. I'm afraid I'm not a musician. I've got a page that I ripped out of an old dictionary and I hate ripping up old books. And usually I would donate books to charity shops, whatever. But this is a really old dictionary back from the 1960s. So it is totally out of date. The binding is gone. It will be no use to anyone. So ripping it up and making it into art is better than just putting it in the recycling. Another bit of old music. I've got some tissue paper. You can get really cheap craft tissue paper you can get acid free tissue paper or again this was wrapping up something that uh, we'd got from ikea piece of furniture so i saved it all and i've got more tissue paper than you can shake a stick at so that costs nothing oh a bit more of that music that was just that packing paper again so there is nothing there, maybe apart from the music, that you won't have in your house. You can make your own collage papers. Just get a piece of photocopy paper. And what is great to do, grab a pen, move that out of the way, and just write across a piece of paper like this. Not only will this focus your mind and maybe overcome any block, it's a lovely way of getting some of your thoughts and integrating them into your collage. I discovered ages ago, I cannot speak and write and film at the same time. I can paint and talk and film, but I just can't write. So I'm going to write some of my hopes and intentions. And I am doing this right at the beginning of January so I'm also going to write some of my sort of New Year's resolutions and hope for the year. Try and use a waterproof pen. It could just be a biro, it could be anything. This isn't very nice actually but it just shows you don't need a posh pen to do this. You could just do it with a pencil. Your handwriting doesn't have to be a beautiful cursive script. It can be really messy in some ways the messier the better. You can fill up your whole page or as much as you think you'll need for those four little squares we've masked off. And some of this might be quite personal. You know, what if I said, I will lose seven pounds in weight. <laughs> but 
the thing is, we're going to rip it up and then it suddenly becomes quite abstract. You can maybe read individual words, but there is sort of privacy in there. So don't worry about that. Alternative, if you do suffer from a white page syndrome, is actually to write it straight on your pages. Uh, I quite often just use pencil. I might write my intentions for, for whatever I'm doing straight on the page and it gets rid of the white paper. It doesn't have to be good spelling, good grammar, good punctuation. The idea is to channel some of your ideas, integrate them into what you're doing and also get rid of that white page if that's intimidating. What we're going to do is grab our collage papers and start arranging them and each one can be a little different. We're using the basic same papers on every page. So just rip things up and I do think a ripped edge is far more attractive than a cut edge. Try and vary the size and the orientation of your pieces. You don't have to cover the whole of your square, maybe on some of them you want to. So you might try a little variety in all these. You'll see that some papers rip more easily, some pe papers will rip well in one direction so they have a grain to them. You might want some sharp edges to contrast with rip ed ripped edges. Quite fun to work with transparency. So if I put tissue paper over the top of this writing, by the time I stick it down, it will become really pretty transparent. And that could be quite a lot of fun. You're thinking, well, that's all a bit boring and neutral. And I'd like to explore one colour in this little exercise. So I happen to have picked up this origami stack, which I thought was brilliant. 400 sheets of every colour. Well, not every colour, but most colours you can think of. So I'm going to use one sheet to inspire me. So I've got lots of neutrals and I'm going to use one little bit of colour pop in this. You could choose your favourite colour. My favourite colour mm, is, a, is a sort of teal that's possibly a bit green. Yours might be something else. Or you could choose your, your least favourite colour so that you maybe fall in love with it a bit more. And actually, I am not a pink person. So, but I like those zigzags. So I am going to pick that. Now, you may not have a stack of origami papers, of course, but you will find somewhere in your house a bit of wrapping paper, an illustration from a magazine, something with a bit of colour on it, and just grab that out so we've got a little bit of pop. Oh, these zigzags are making my eyes go a bit funny, actually. And we can think about adding that in. It's torn up you can start to do some arranging. Remember, you're going to remove the tape afterwards. So just consider the overlap. I think that arrangement is OK. So I've tried to vary the sizes of the paper. I've tried to vary how much is actually showing the base paper. I suggest taking a quick photo at this point because you're going to have to move these pieces to stick them down. Stick things down. You could use a glue stick or you could use matte gel medium. This Pabio tends to be pretty easy to get hold of and pretty reasonable in price. And if you're just starting out, maybe and you happen to have a glue stick and some matte gel or some PVA, some white school glue, maybe do one of each. And then again, you're learning something from each the one. Matte gel doesn't matter if you get some on top. In fact, that is good because it will seal the papers in place. Remember about our overlap because we're going to have to take the tape off. You may find some of your papers buckle. 
the thinner ones will and some papers become quite fragile as they're damp like the tissue paper look that tissue paper virtually disappears but will leave a bit of a texture don't be frightened to change your mind as you go along if you look and think actually no that's not working you know just sort it out if you do have any little overhangs like this will be once it's dry it'll be easy to remove them most important thing is to make sure everything's pretty secure because this is the basis for your work and if it all peels off you'll be upset We need to let this dry before we go on. That's a good opportunity to wash your brush up and um, clear the decks. And now we want to add a little more. What I'm going to do is use some gesso. So this is white gesso. And I'm going to use some of this to calm down some of the areas and to prepare the, some of the papers for having a little bit of colour added to them. If you're not familiar with gesso, it's just a white primer. It's what you put on canvas before you paint with oils or acrylics. I'm using a credit card. Well, actually, it's my Hobbycraft card. Hobbycraft, if you're not in the UK, uh, is a bit like Hobby Lobby, but without the uh, controversy. It's just a craft shop. And we can scrape some gesso in places. So you could always, you could use a brush for this if you prefer. It's not fully opaque, but say you've got an area that you just want to calm down, it can be really useful. It adds a sort of textural element, which I rather enjoy, and can be useful for blending the edges of papers. Should you notice any edges lifting, obviously do stick them down. Probably a glue stick would be a good thing to do at the moment. I don't want to cover everything with the gesso because I worked hard on that collage but it can break things up and add some texture and another little level of interest. Clear gesso is brilliant if you want to see all your patterns. It's also great if you use shiny papers or very absorbent papers. A bit of gesso will add texture and get us ready for some colour. I've got some quinacrolone red here, which is a very pink colour, and I've got watercolour. Most people use acrylics for mixed media work, but I am interested in seeing what I can do with, with my watercolours. See that the watercolour is being repelled in some areas, which actually are rather like, and it's flowing in others. Perhaps I will get some of this colour to run by putting it down and then dropping water through it. And we'll let that dry. I think it would be great fun to do some stenciling next. Stencils are a lovely way of adding a really regular pattern. When you've got such a chaotic background going on, sometimes a bit of regularity is appreciated by the eye. You could stencil with acrylic, but I've actually got some gouache here. It's only in these little pots because the, the tube was starting to leak. Watercolour, you need to be very careful because it's runny, it is likely to seep under the stencil and you won't get a crisp outline. And what I like to do is just hold it in place and stipple. And even that has slightly run, I'm afraid. And then you'll need to wash your stencil off before using it again so it doesn't smear everywhere. If you don't want all of a stencil, of course you can just either simply do the bits that you do want or mask out if it's a bit more complicated. So actually cover the bits you don't want to stencil with a bit of masking tape or something like that. I like gouache because it tends to be pretty opaque and will cover up marks underneath. If 
if you want any more tips about using stencils i've got a whole film about it now those have gone very badly generally i don't care about imperfection but that was a right mess let's try and finish these in four different ways because that's the whole point of this experiment first one i've got these these are called woodies they are water soluble crayons actually designed for kids i've done a whole review of them but they can be used as a crayon a pencil or a watercolor really nice way of using them is to dip them in water and then do your mark and the great thing is because they're so thick you can't be precise it gives you a really lovely loose mark you might be shouting at the the film i haven't got all these supplies you know right well just use an ordinary ballpoint pen because you've probably got one of those we started with writing and we could end with writing something just really loose joy is the word for this year and all to come while we're on this one if you wanted to and maybe say you've got an acrylic marker this is a posca and oh that wasn't meant to happen and when something happens it wasn't meant to happen probably best not to panic let me pick up some of that what i wanted to do was put little white dots in the middle of these so something went wrong i'm not panicking and i can that's one of the great joys of this mixed media approach is that you can uh, rescue situations <laughs> oops oh tell you what stamping you can get beautiful stamps that you might want to use in mixed media work you're never going to have the perfect stamp so you're always going to have to improvise it's a good idea to use a waterproof ink even though this is right at the end it's probably just in case you suddenly to add something else so on this one let's add a little stamping and I quite like it going off the edge and not being complete. Stamps can be used in an abstract way or you can have stamps that are actually something. So I've got some nice long tall flowers here. I've put them on the, the block because I want this to be a bit more precise. And I'm going to print like that bother didn't want them to come outside there didn't think about that let's learn from my mistake and just mask that off but for example you know i said about improvising with stencils say i wanted just three lines i can improvise with stamps just as easily So the great thing about mixed media is it makes you use your tools in a more creative way. I've got a black Posca pen and I'm just going to come back in and put some more dots. And over here I'm going to use the ball pen. ballpoint pen. Just sort of a few finer marks might be nice. Just going to use my stencil in a different way break up those pink circles in fact i like that so much i wonder about doing that here so if you're thinking oh i haven't got all these posh materials look a ballpoint pen can be just as useful so we can leave these as abstract pieces or if you want to you can start to add a focal point you could add any scraps that you've got that might be appropriate 
so that stamp would work there or this is a bit from an old napkin we could add a butterfly this is a little scrap of paper that might work there and pick up on some of the music we put in before or you can add words and sentiments we when we started we talked about the sentiments um, this is just a bit of washi tape that's got me and you written on it if you wanted sentiment you can write something you can cut it out of the paper or use something like this this point I'd probably use a glue stick simply because it'll dry a lot quicker but you could use your gel again nice thing about napkins is that they go sort of transparent when they're stuck on and really we are finished now we'll let them dry and then we'll carefully remove the tape so I've taken off the tape and as predicted, because this is such a soft handmade paper, it has ripped it up dreadfully. So that's a lesson learned for me. I should have done what I did with other samples in here, done it on harder paper and then cut it out and stuck it down. Hey ho, never mind. The point of your art journal is to learn and to practice and to enjoy and then I can take what I've learned here forward into new work with new techniques. So just using a few bits of scrap paper, we had packaging paper, we had packaging tissue paper, we had a bit of an old book and we had one coloured bit of paper, which actually has pretty much got lost in a lot of this. We explored a colour that either we didn't particularly like or was indeed our favourite. And then we layered, layered, layered and tried all sorts of different techniques for those finishing touches from stenciling to scribbling to using a ballpoint pen to printing to then putting on a little focal point with a bit of napkin or a little scrap or a stamp or, or putting a sentiment on. And we've now got loads of ideas to take forward. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope it gives you lots of inspiration for your art journal or for your mixed media work. Mm -hmm.